it seems to me like there are some emotional hang-ups many of you are dealing with. And um, I'm feeling like you're finding other avenues, other things to keep your hands busy, to keep your mind busy, to keep your body occupied so that you're not thinking about, you know, relationship problems. That's what it feels like to me. Um, it also seems to me as if, you know, you're moving, physically moving stuff from one house to the next. So moving out, uh, turning your back and moving out in a situation, coming back to an ex to retrieve your stuff and then, you know, slithering away. That's what I'm feeling as well. Um, I feel multiple trips taken back and forth between two different housing situations as well. And um, I'm also feeling uh, inventory, a lot of stock, a lot of inventory. For those of you who are self-employed or, you know, have a home-based business, or even um, I feel like you have a lot of either binders, samples. Um, I, I'm also seeing like magazines or rulers. I'm seeing a lot of stuff. Uh, that you're moving from one from your old office to your new office. So I feel like there's a big moving energy as it relates to your relationship sector. Um, for some of you, you know, I mentioned before, uh, you're a very, you know, spirited sign. And a lot of the times in relationships, you're just like, let's do this, let's do that. And then you're, you, you tend to attract partners who are a little bit more laid back. And then you feel, you find yourself at the end of it doing all the work. You thought of the idea and then the other person is just going for the ride. They assume you're going to do all the work and then you end up doing all the work and then you become resentful. I want you to be very aware of that, okay? So the way that you want to phrase it next time to your partner is, I want to do this. Do you want to do it with me? And I need help. Can you help me? You know, uh, use language that is a little bit more inclusive, okay? That way your partner can meet you halfway and that way you don't end up feeling resentful because you are doing all the work. So a lot of the times language, the, the way we communicate, the words, the words that we use, the word choice matters a lot because we need to communicate with the other person on the level that they can understand. So if you were to just say like, I want to have a barbecue, let's have a barbecue this Saturday, your partner is going to say, sure. And then your partner feels like, oh, he or she, the Aries, wants the barbecue. So I guess, you know, they're going to have a barbecue. And so they don't feel like they need to chip in. They don't feel like they need to work out the logistics. Whereas you thought, oh, we're in a relationship. We're supposed to be doing these things together. So don't assume and also break things down for your partner, okay? Communication is so important, okay? And I, I feel like this is something you're doing that you might not be aware of. And then you end up bearing the brunt of the work in that relationship over and over and over and over again and then you know there is that sense of resentment coming in okay so be careful about that so we have a marriage situation here pulled out an extra card for you guys, mainly because I wanted to see what direction you're headed. So first of all, we have a marriage situation here. This is like a, a, a relationship where there is an official um, marriage contract, where there is like a combining of family, combining of assets, having joint bank accounts. The Hierophant is an institution card. It's an institution in relationship reading. It's an institution of marriage. It's a family institution. You have somebody in your life that you are kind of legally bound to. And you might also have joint bank accounts. You might have joined your assets together. Your family might know, you know, your family members might know the person, might uh, spend a lot of time with the person. You, likewise, might also spend a lot of time with the other person's family. So I feel like there is a, a very thorough and whole um, combining of people, combining of assets, combining of, you know, it's like a, a really solid institution I feel that it's no longer serving you at this point because we have here 
the Two of Wands is showing up again. This is a situation where we feel like something is holding us back. We feel like it's too restrictive or we feel like it's really hampering our freedom, our independence. And it's too rigid, it's too structured. And you're not comfortable being in it because you feel as if your freedom of expression, your freedom of movement is greatly limited. Uh, when it shows up in the reverse position, it can also indicate to me kind of like two people who are kind of um, taking a break from each other or two people who are kind of at a distance from each other, long distance relationship or emotionally estranged from one another living in. It's like you're still legally married, but you're living in different houses. You're coming back to see each other. But I feel like emotionally there is a huge sense of estrangement because the relationship itself, it seems like it's for show or it's done for show and it's very rigid. It's not in um, it's not conducive for love and, you know, emotions. What I also have as well is the Prince of Wands, and this is your energy here. This is somebody who's very passionate. This is somebody who really, really cares for their partner. When they see their partner sad, they want to do something to make their partners happy. You know, it's like somebody who's uh, capable of great sacrifices, somebody who charges in and writes a situation. When it's in the reverse position, I just feel like you're turning your back. You're no longer talking to somebody. Somebody is like, trying to reel you back in or somebody is telling you I really miss you I really want to see you again um, can we um, reconvene can we reconcile can we get together because we've had all these things that we've you know spent time on building up over the years we have this long history we even have this family or we even have this marriage contract and you're not hearing it I feel like you're you know definitely turning your back and you're definitely storming away, okay? Um, what's coming into the picture here? We have the Six of Wands, and the Six of Wands basically says that you've already made up your mind, you've already resigned yourself to the fact that you're not happy here, it's too restrictive, or you're not happy with this person for whatever reason, mainly because I do feel like, yes, the relationship was stable, it provided everything that you could want and ever need and it provided that you know stable relationship partner even but if you look at this person center stage there's a lack of satisfaction there's this yearning for you know is this it or is there more to it I'm kind of bored with this prosperity I want something a little bit new I want something a little bit more exciting I want something a little bit more uh, a little bit different and I also feel like a big part of you know as well that if ever you're single, there will be a lot of suitors at your door because you're a very popular sign. You know how to uh, strike up conversation. You're very dashing and charming. And I feel like you're quite popular. You know, you know, you could be a female and you have a lot of male friends. You have a lot of female friends. So your social environment is very diverse. It's also very robust. And you have, you know, a lot of acquaintances. And so this is a card that indicates as well, you know what you're worth. And I do feel a big part of you guys, um, you're yearning for a relationship that where it's not just a, a passionate love affair. You want a friend. You want somebody to do things with. You want somebody to kind of like be on your level. And you want somebody to be... Uh, out and about with you where you both can be seen and heard and so you're asking a lot from a relationship but what I feel is if you've already resigned yourself that the situation it's stagnant it's not going to work for me and you're not just escaping it out of a you know a, on a whim you've thought long and hard about the situation and you're wondering it's not going to work or you're you know telling yourself it's not going to work you've already resigned yourself to that decision so this is a really good month, I, I feel, to kind of slow down and to really think about our partners and their emotional needs. If you're in a relationship that is like this, stable, but kind of boring, and you're looking for something new, you want to ask yourself, you know, do I still love this person? Is this person also sacrificing 
other aspects of themselves in order to be in a relationship with me. Because a lot of the times, you know, when we feel like, oh, I've had enough, it can, we, we only look at things from our point of view. And we don't really put ourselves in our partner's shoes to understand, like, is this person, is my partner also, out of, you know, like, foregoing some of their own interests in order to cater to this relationship. So learning to kind of like switch the scenario around and seeing things from your partner's point of view is going to be very enlightening for you guys. And then you can make a decision moving forward. You know, is it worth staying in? Is it done and over with? Is it just going to be stale and stagnant and I need to move out because I feel like some of you are looking for excitement? Okay. So let me see if this is a partner or if this is your energy. Okay. So let me talk about this we have here um this is like a, a a sore spot this is something that hasn't healed this is like heartache that we're still clinging on to that still deeply affects us it still uh, tugs at our heartstrings every once in a while and it's still something that is very new and very 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 raw and um i'm sensing you know at the beginning i feel like some of you are keeping yourself very very distracted because you don't want to deal with some emotional problems you don't want to deal with something you don't want your thoughts to get away from you if you find yourself kind of idle you start thinking about it and then this wave of emotion overcomes you and you don't want to be like that because you know deep down you're very proud you're proud of being stoic. You're proud of being able to take care of yourself. And like a, an Aquarius too, you also, you're, you, you tend to downplay the emotional side of things. So, you know, there's this face that you show to the world. Everything is okay. I've got everything under control. I've got people that I love that I'm taking care of. I'm abundant. I have a really good job. I'm making very, very good money. I have, you know, enough financial resources to support a very lavish lifestyle. I'm okay. But then deep down, I feel like that's the facade. Whatever is going on underneath is this is painful separation, having to leave a situation, mainly because there was a lot of guilt for whatever reason. There was a lot of deception. There was a situation where we felt like the other person just uh, didn't know how to take care of themselves. Um, this card deals with depression, okay? It's in the reverse position, so I feel like it's not that dire, it's not that bad. But if you're surrounded by swords like this, I feel like you have an answer question. You're trying to dig at the truth. You're trying to pry at the truth. And it's it's um kind of weird because with the the same card came out for the Piscean people you might be dealing with a Pisces and then I pulled out you know this card that came up earlier the king of cups this is somebody that might be the cause of it this is somebody who might be very deceptive this is somebody that is um, I want to say calculating and cunning usually the kings and queens they're kind of uh, a lot more they're supposed to be a lot more um, emotionally evolved ethically evolved but when they consciously choose to make wrong decisions it's very orchestrated it's very uh, methodical and a lot of the times I feel like you know they, they know exactly what they're doing so I feel like you're dealing with somebody that is a little bit on the vindictive side and possibly manipulative as well so this is somebody that you're thinking about heavily and I feel like it's really affecting your day-to-day -day operations. You do put on a brave face. You do want to show the world that, you know, I've, I've got it together. But I feel like I don't feel there's any regrets from your end. You've overcome the grief. You've already done that, you know, that whole self-talk about, yes, it did happen. I've accepted it. And now you're just dealing with the thoughts of you know what could have been how could this person do this and I feel like there's still some unanswered questions from your end I feel like you still have questions you still want answers but I feel like you're still very proud you don't want to to you know approach them and dig for answers I feel like you're turning your back and you're taking care of yourself so 
So let me see here. So we have here the devil. You have a lot of major arcana cards coming out, by the way. We have the devil. And the devil is basically um, somebody that might have been, you know, um, addicted to things. They might have had unhealthy obsessions, unhealthy addictions, or you were stuck in a relationship where it was not healthy, okay? It was very restrictive. There were power struggles. There were control issues. There might have been lies and deception as well, and you don't really know what to believe. And at the heart of it, I feel like some of you, um, you know, this is something that I feel a lot with fire signs, especially if you have like a, a moon in a fire sign, you want a relationship that is very, very dynamic. So like something that's too stable and too, too safe, you might consider it to be very, very boring. So you want a relationship where to you're like different from your partner so that it's a lot more dynamic so that is a lot more interesting but with this sense of incompatibility it can also create a situation where it's very tumultuous where it can feel like you're talking over each other so the chemistry is great the attraction is very strong but there is like very little common ground that you both can kind of stand on and meet each other halfway so i feel like you were definitely coming to the point to the realization you were with somebody that's not good for you you were in a relationship where the other person um i just feel like they didn't have the same goals okay and so this is kind of moving out breaking away from this bondage situation moving out moving homes moving all your stuff from your ex's house into your new house moving all of your physical things and having to do it alone and i also feel some of you it's kind of like feeling very alone in our struggle wanting to move away to a new relationship as well so i feel like don't rush this process okay if you need to heal Take the time to heal. Make yourself better. Don't rush the process of dating or, you know, distracting yourself with work so that you can forget something that happened in the past or you can forget an ex or you can get over a um, sudden heartbreak. I feel like it's really important for you to take the time to mourn, to heal. And then, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself because beating yourself up at a time like this is not going to solve anything, okay? What is your advice for Aries for this month? In terms of the advice, let me talk about this. Um, so the Ace of Cups is, this is something that's God given. It's something that's coming to you from your external environment. It has a lot of potential for growth. And uh, the nature of the water sign, the, the cup's energy, is that we have to nurture it. You know, if it shows up in the reverse position, it's somebody coming in empty-handed. It's like they, they don't even love themselves. So if they don't even have that sense of self-love, they can't really be in a relationship with anybody because they're not going to know how to properly love another person, okay? I feel like you have some unanswered questions. You have things that you want to confront somebody, an ex. You you have things about that have been revealed to you about a relationship partner and you're not really sure. It's it's almost like you have all these questions but you're very proud you don't want to ask them. And so while you're sitting there speculating, I wonder if they, he or she did this. I wonder if he or she did that. I wonder, you know, who it was with. I wonder if they ever, you know, all of these things are kind of circling around you. And I feel like one of the things that you need to be um, kind of mindful about is the situation is exactly as it is. What you see is what you get, because this is like the most straightforward message that you're going to get. We have here the Knight of Swords. This is somebody that is coming in to deliver the truth. They're going to tell you it is what it is. 
and you might have been dealing with somebody that is lacking in self-love and because they come into the relationship very empty like this they're not going to be capable of you know devoting their love to you they don't really have anything on the table to offer and so their love is a little bit tainted it's a little bit empty and it can leave your life very empty as well I'm also feeling for many of you who are dealing with an air sign so this is an Aquarius a Gemini or a Libra this is somebody who's very 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 honest very truthful very faithful and I also feel some of you are questioning as well you're either questioning am I in love with this person because I don't feel they're questioning that about you I feel like they're gonna be there and they're coming into the picture to have a conversation with you but you're doubting am I still in love am I gonna stay here is this all there is to this relationship is it going stale can we still fix things and can we still be together what is the relationship gonna look like you know five years from now I feel like there's some major decisions here that you're making and it's with an air sign so an Aquarius Gemini and Libra and you might be as well transitioning from that fire sign moving into a new relationship where you have someone who's very honest but there are definitely lingering trust issues from the past that's really affecting your current state of mind with this new person approach new people with a fresh lens okay with a fresh pair of eyes because if you're hanging on to self-doubt and you know if you're not ready to date you're not ready and I feel like for singles out there there's great energy here great potential with an air sign but if you're not ready then you know don't uh, drag them into this until you're ready and then at the same time I feel like you're transitioning and you're bringing a lot of trust issues with you which you know I, I understand that um, your pride is hurt I definitely feel that and I felt that last month but it's okay we live and learn we rebuild we become smarter we become more evolved and I feel like you know the emotional realm is not something you guys are uncom or are comfortable with and something really hurt you and really hit you hard emotionally and I feel like you're still adjusting to it okay uh, take it easy Aries I do wish you all the best um, take it easy okay don't wear yourself out don't overwork take some time to yourself spend some time with you know your girlfriends get a group of girls together go out get a group of your guys together and go out decompress do it in a safe and also a uh, very like unassuming manner be around people that you trust okay so I wish you all the best take care of yourself okay and I'll be back uh, for your reading bye bye